Beautiful. Um, okay, so hello everybody and welcome to the first webinar from a three-part learning series on empowering women in integrated pest management as part of the ASEAN Fall Army Worm Action Plan. Uh, my name is Deandra Fernandez and I will be your moderator for today along with Alison Watson. I'm also joined by some wonderful speakers from Kenya, the Philippines, and Indonesia, who I will introduce to you shortly. Um, I'm a drop student at Griffith University, and I'm working part-time as a project assistant for the Women as IPM Leaders Program. And I would like to thank all those you know, that have been involved in one way or the other in contributing ideas and just helping me put the series together. Um, I'd also like, like to thank the funders of this program and the lovely speakers who have joined us today. So a few housekeeping rules before we get started. And yeah, I'm sure everyone's familiar with this by now, uh, but these are just a few instructions on how we can interact on the Zoom platform. Uh, so please use the chat to introduce yourself with your name, your organization, and the country that you're from. And anything else that you think you know is of interest that you would like to share on any gender related projects or pests and disease management and you think that you've got some interesting information links or resources or even experiences uh, please do share them in the chat if you'd like to thank the speakers or you know say a job well done um, you can use the chat to do so if you've got any questions um, i encourage you to use the q a box and please do keep the questions coming as this would really help with um, running the session smoothly. Um, just to let you know that the is recorded and a link to the recording as well as a PDF thing about a week or so from today. Leandra, um, you, it's yes, Alison here. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. You're just breaking up a little bit. So I think it might be best if you turn your um, video off. Uh, and now that everyone's seen you, I think that might help. Sorry about that. No, oh, definitely. I'm sorry. My internet is being a bit tricky today. Um, well, yeah, so this webinar is being recorded and the link to the webinar and a PDF will be shared. Um, if you would like to rename yourself, you can just click on participants and then on the option more, your name, and you can include your organization next to your name. If you have any technical problems, um, which I'm having right now, sorry, try logging off and on. And if this still doesn't work, then do send us a message in the chat. Um, so this is part one of a three-part learning series. And today we will be looking at exploring the roles and responsibilities of women in pest and disease management, particularly fruit flies in mango production. So by the end of the session, um, we're hoping that everyone will have a better understanding of gender differences in mango farming and what these differences in roles, farming practices and knowledge could imply for the development of any proposed management and biosecurity strategies. We will also be exploring how the adoption of area-wide management and IPM impacts women farmers in terms of time and labor constraints. Um, so, you know, do they find that the adoption of area-wide management and IPM to be more time and labor consuming, or has it impacted their decision-making at the household level in any way? So these are just some of the questions you know, that we are hoping can be answered in today's webinar. Our next session will be held on um, the 18th of October, where we will be exploring the gender roles, practices, and experiences surrounding marriage of banana diseases such as Fusarium wilt and banana bungee top and how we can use this understanding in decision making um, and take it you know, a step further to help in the design and implementation of IPM. So our final and the third session of the series is going to be on the 16th of November and in this we're going to be um, exploring ways in which we could use different approaches when communicating with men and women farmers. Finally, we will be having a conference on women empowerment sometime in the first week of December. So we're yet to decide 
on a date. Um, and, you know, if any of you would like to present your work, uh, research, your activities on gender and, plus, and plant pests and disease management at the conference, do get in touch with us. So this is just a quick look, um, just to give everyone an idea of what we've got planned for you today. So it is definitely going to be an action-packed session. And I'm going to quickly do a poll just before we get started, because I'd like to get to know the audience a bit more and your take on gender. Um, so oh, Alison's on it already. So if you could just answer these questions, um, that'd be great. Do you think gender is an important aspect to be considered when designing and implementing integrated pest management approaches? Are you currently involved in any gender work in your organization? And are you involved in any work with managing food flies? So if you are involved in gender work in your organization and managing food flies, um, I'd encourage you to share your thoughts and experiences in the chat because then we can get a really good discussion going around this. I've got the results coming in already. And I think we can end the poll pretty soon. What do you reckon, Alison? We'll leave Thank it a little you. bit longer because we're yeah. we're actually only at 62%, which is actually very high. Um, but I'm hoping that we can get even more people participating. So uh, we'll give everyone a little bit of time because you've got three questions. Definitely. So we are at around 72% 70, 70 at the moment. Probably wait till we get to... Well, should we try for 90? 80? Oh, 80. I, <laughs> I, think, 90. 90. I think 90 <laughs> might be. <laughs> <laughs> no, sometimes if people are listening on their phones, um, they sometimes can't do the poll. I think that might be the, might be a bit ambitious, but we're at seventy nine percent. So come on, we need one more person. If you haven't done it, <laughs> <laughs> I'd really like to just get over now that sort of it's like a competitive streak. Yeah. If if you haven't done it, because um, I'm going to end the poll very soon. I think I'm going to do that. There we go. We've oh, done it. So I'm going to end the poll. Beautiful. Hey, so we've got um, 80% who think that gender is an important, or agree that gender is an important aspect to be considered in the design and implementation of ITM. But about 11% that don't think it is, and say 9% that uh, don't know. And oh, well, that's a good number. We've got 43% who are involved in gender work. So please do you know, share um, any resources or your experiences in the chat. And about 36% that are working with mango fruit flies. Beautiful. Okay, um, do I just stop sharing that, Alison? Yep, all good. Beautiful. Um, so I think I've taken up quite a bit of time, so I'll just get started. But before I do, do that, I'd like to introduce our three wonderful speakers for today. So we got Dr. Beatrice Morisi, who is the research scientist at the International Center of Insect Physiology and Ecology, so that's ECK's Social Science and Impact Assessment Unit. Beatrice has done a lot of work with socioeconomic related activities across several projects and programs in the animal, plant, and environmental health sectors at ECK. Her interests lie in gender analysis, technology adoption, and impact studies. She has also received various awards and recognition for her work. Um, our second speaker for today is Professor Hanjali Pavati Soyam. I hope I said that correctly. Um, she's a re senior researcher in cultural economics at the National Research and Innovation Agency. She has been the director of the Indian Center Studies at ECOSEPS of the Indonesian Ministry of Agriculture from 2010 to 2016. As a researcher, she has published more than 130 papers in the field of agricultural economics in national and international journal journals. Our third and final speaker for today is Ms. Mexico Lopez who has had over 15 years of experience in research management and coordination as a researcher at the University of Philippines, Mindanao. She's a PhD candidate in development studies at the University of Philippines, Los Llanos, and has been working on her dissertation on gender mainstreaming in cocoa value chains. 
Presently, Ms. Lopez is among the Philippine cohort of the John Dillon Fellowship and is involved in two ongoing research projects under the fellowship. So it is a pleasure to have you all here with us today. And without any further ado, let's get started. And I'd like Beatrice to share her presentation and kick start this webinar. I'm just going to stop sharing. Okay, let me first of all, um, I hope you can hear me. Yes, I uh, can. Thank you, very, thank you very much for this opportunity. It's actually very humbling to present uh, in this forum. Um, and, um, as I was introduced, I'm a, a research scientist uh, working with the Social Science and Impact Assessment Unit of ECP. And uh, because I believe most of you do not know um, about ICPE, I, I'm just going to start with a short introduction of who, uh, what is ICPE, or rather who we are. Um, uh, so this is the full name, International Center for Insect Physiology and Ecology. And uh, we are headquartered in Nairobi, Kenya. Um, but I, I'll, I'll show you in a minute, we are also in, in other countries. Um, uh, so the ICPE is a center of excellence in Africa for research and capacity building in insect science and its application. Uh, we, are, we, we are an intergovernmental organization with uh, quite a big number of staff, about 530 staff or 40 nationalities from all over the world. And um, we, we usually recruit about 150 to 100 graduate students annually. Um, ECP has a record of about uh, 50 years. We just celebrated our 50 year anniversary, I think uh, two years ago. And uh, during that period, we have had four directors. The current director is uh, Dr. Keremu from Ethiopia. Uh, he, uh, this, is, this is how ECP works. We, uh, we work in uh, four main health themes, the human health, working on malaria, sleeping sickness and other uh, vectors of human diseases. Then we have the animal and um, animal health dealing with um, all sorts of pests and diseases that affect uh, plants. And this is where our mango work falls. And then we have the animal health looking at sese, tick and biting flies and other diseases that affect uh, animals. We also have the environmental health uh, that deals uh, with research on bees and other commercial insects, including the insect for food and feed, which is currently a very big research area. And um, over and above that, we have the large component of capacity building institutional development uh, through these different programs. Um, I'm coming from a unit called the Social Science and Impact Re Assessment Unit. These are research supports. Uh, we support all the other different themes. Uh, as you can see, there are quite a number of other uh, different units working on uh, different areas. For instance, we have the data management team and others that support um, the different themes. And uh, in a nutshell, this is where we work in Africa. As you can see, we have presence in almost all the countries in, uh, in Africa. And as I said, we are headquartered in Nairobi, but we have a, another office in the west of Kenya. We also have main office in a, a, another office in Ethiopia, as well as uh, Citrite uh, offices or a presence in different universities and different institutions in Africa. So for the topic of today, I was requested to talk on um, the effect of technology innovation on gender roles. Uh, this is the case of fruit fry, IPM adoption and women uh, decision making. As, as Riandra said, I have worked a lot, I think for the last since I joined ECPE, I have been working on um, integrated pest management for fruit fry and also for other pests uh, and other crops. Uh, but my bulk of the work has been on uh, mango fruit fry. Um, so for this particular, just, just a way of introduction, 
In sub-Saharan Africa, fruit and vegetables play a very important socioeconomic role. Um, and it employs about 75% of women uh, alone in, in, uh, in Kenya. Um, and of course, this is along the whole value chain of mango uh, product from, uh, from mango production to marketing. In Kenya, mango is actually ranked the second in terms of exotic fruits or export after banana. So it contributes significantly to um, you know, a population of, of uh, a low rural areas. And um, however, the production of mango in Kenya, just like many Sub-Saharan Africa is, a potential, is below the potential and uh, chiefly because of the fruit fry, the invasive fruit fry, which is Bacrocella, uh, uh, dosari is actually not no longer in Vardens. Um, so the fruit fry challenge is actually a very big challenge in terms of economic losses, estimated to be about USD, uh, 2 um, billion USD. And uh, of course, this is contributed both directly and indirectly, directly through you know, loss of, of fruits. Um, this has been estimated to be between 30 to 100 percent. And of course, indirectly due to quarantine restrictions on trade and lost export opportunities um, in the recreative markets due to these invasives. Uh, so what has the CIPE done in order to um, bridge this gap? So ICP has developed um, IPM pack, an IPM package for management of fruit fry, as you can see in this beautiful photo here. Uh, we have different components of um, the, you know, the, the, the approach or the package, including the use of orchard sanitation. Uh, we have parasitoids being introduced uh, from where the invasive Bactrocella dosaris came from. Uh, we also have biopesticide. Uh, we also have uh, this technology called uh, male inheritance technique that eliminates the males from the environment uh, so that the females, uh, the eggs do not get harsh. And then we also have the food bait um, uh, spray. So all these um, uh, have been disseminated and proven to work. Uh, and of course, we have done a lot of uh, impact assessment. We have seen that mango loss is reduced due to fruit fry. Uh, due to fruit fry, we also have seen reduced expenditure on pesticide. We have also seen improvement in mango uh, income, as well, of course, translating to second level um, impact on uh, uh, you know in, in, in reduction of poverty, improvement of food security and also the health and environmental um, risks that are associated with the use of pesticides. So overall, of course, the IPM program has contributed to poverty reduction, food security, and improvement of health status of the communities involved. So for this particular study, uh, we thought, yes, we have looked at uh, this ICPI fruit fry IPM and recorded the direct benefits of, on uh, on yields, on pesticide expenditure, and on environment. But then we thought, how does this technology then influence the gender roles? Have uh, women, or uh, you know, how are decisions made between men and women uh, when it comes to mango production? Does the women role in mango production and marketing has it been interrupted because of the technology? We all know that uh, from the gender literature that women are constrained when it comes to productive resources. And uh, therefore, are they able to assess this technology the same way as men? The other thing we know from literature is that when uh, a product or a crop becomes commercialized, men tend to shift their focus to the commercialized um, um, you know, a crop and, and uh, taking over from, from women. So we thought, why don't we look at how this technology has influenced the gender roles um, in mango production and marketing. So, um, so the objective was to evaluate the effect of fruit fry IPM strategy on women decision making in mango production and uh, marketing. These nice photos you are seeing here are, are some of the the, tech, the IPM technologies that I mentioned, 
The guy in black is one of our technician and uh, these women are some of the farmers who have benefited from uh, our IPM technologies. So um, to do this study, we, we, we selected uh, two sub counties in one county of Kenya. This is just an administrative unit where mango production is predominant. So for one sub county, we treated it as treatment, then we, we, we distributed the IPM products or package to the farmers. And the other one, we treated it as a control. Uh, Adia was mentioning about uh, a picture that uh, Riandra used for the introduction. This picture is actually from uh, one of these sub counties, the Moara sub county. And uh, so all these, uh, both counties are characterized by small scale mango production. And uh, actually this is the target for all most of, most of our work. We have a few farmers who do large scale farming, who are also beneficiaries, but most of our research focuses on small holder farmers. Uh, so we selected land ombre 300 uh, mango growers from the two uh, sub counties and uh, we collected panel data. For those who know panel data is just repeating or collecting data from the same uh, people uh, for more than one time. So we had a before and after the distribution of IPM packages and uh, just uh, because of purposes of attrition, we had a few farmers who uh, dropped uh, when we were doing the final uh, survey or the second round of the survey. So in total, we had 286, 89 farmers from the treatment area and 277 from the control area. And of course, because this, this um, study looks at a gender, we analyzed households that had both a spouse, uh, the head and the spouse. And uh, in that case, the, the, the sample reduced to 470 households. So how did we capture uh, the women roles in marketing and production? Uh, so we adopted what, uh, I don't know whether people are familiar with the Women Empowerment in Africa Index. Uh, that has been developed and actually still being developed uh, by uh, IFPRI, uh, IFPRI team. Right now, they started with the Women Empowerment in Agriculture, then they have abbreviated uh, Women Empowerment in Agriculture, then they realized that different projects measure different, uh, I mean, gender women empowerment in, in different ways. So they have come up with project level women empowerment. So we use the very original uh, women empowerment in agriculture index um, uh, domains and indicators, as you can see here. But of course, we tailored them to fit a, a, a now in our study, uh, so that we could examine the different roles of uh, women. Um, so we have, as you can see, there are five domains in measuring women involvement in mango production and marketing. So the first one is production, where we ask. Uh, which, which looks at the place uh, to acquire production inputs, how much input has been put in production, the distribution of production inputs in each of the mango plots. Then we have resources, where to acquire credit, when to acquire, how much, uh, income, uh, marketing channels to use, who receive the money uh, from mango sales, and how the money is allocated that the women, I mean, so we were looking at where uh, decisions made by uh, whether it's man only, women only, or jointry. Uh, so uh, if, if there is a women only or joint decision making, then uh, we learned that uh, indicator is, is one. So basically we, those were the five domains that we uh, looked at. And then we constructed uh, what we're calling decision-making index. Uh, this is just a simple uh, way of, uh, you know, aggregating um, the decision-making index also borrowed from the same team. Um, and uh, if, um, for, 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 for us to say that a woman has been empowered, then they need to have an aggregate score of 80% in all the five domains. All, they should have at least five for a full score or in four 
of the five domains. So 80% is considered as the empowerment score uh, for uh, guided by, by the IFPRI um, team. And uh, for analysis, we used the uh, Tobit difference in difference model. Tobit in the because we have uh, this, the DMMI is a zero to, to, uh, to one uh, uh, variable, uh, dependent, uh, dependent variable. And then, um, of course, this is a panel data analysis. That's why we have uh, the time dummy there, um, you know, baseline and headline. Then we have the treatment variable, which is treatment or control. And then we had a set of many exogenous or independent variables uh, that, of course, could also influence decision making um, index. Um, <clears throat> uh, so, this just highlights some of those explanatory or exogenous variables that we consider uh, important, of course, based on literature and also the context of the study. Uh, for instance, the age of um, you know, the female or the woman. Uh, of course, uh, we all know that uh, age has, has um, an influence on decisions that are made within the household. We have also time spent on uh, by the female spouse in farming activities, and and also uh, so a full set of different farm uh, characteristics of the individual, as well as household characteristics, including the land ownership in terms of size. Uh, the number of female and male uh, members of the household, and also some of the social norms. We know social norms, uh, cultural, cultural norms, are, uh, and social norms are very important in influencing how women um, uh, make decisions in the household. So all those were considered. And uh, these are the results. I just show first of all the descriptive results women decision-making index um, before and after the interventions. Uh, so uh, the IPM adopters here are the treatment and the IPM non-adopters are the non-treatment. And uh, if you uh, look at um, the decision-making index for the women before the baseline was uh, about 58%, um, but after the, you know, after the intervention, this one reduced significantly, as you can see, to three, uh, that about 37.2%. Uh, and if you look at the specific, the different domains, you can see, for instance, the production domain reduced from, you know, 8% uh, to 6%. The resource domain also reduced from 10 to 5%. Income domain, 16 to 12, time domain, uh, the same as well as uh, the leadership domain. So overall, the decision making of women uh, before, I mean, after the technology actually um, uh, reduced. So meaning uh, there was a shift in decision making by the men uh, from uh, before, before the intervention came. And obvious, as I said, uh, we, there was a bit of um, in income improved, um, losses reduce. So, as I said from the beginning, the, the premise or the hypothesis that when a man, when a, com a crop is commercialized or income increases, we tend to see men shifting their focus uh, from, you know, uh, from, uh, to, to that crop that has gained more um, income. Uh, just to show uh, the, 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 the empirical analysis. Um, if you recall in the model, uh, the one that we are interested in, the variable is the one that in, uh, interacts the treatment and the time. And you can see it's significant and it's also negative, meaning that, um, you know, after controlling for the exogenous variables, um, decision making for women still reduced significantly by about 22%. And uh, of course, as I said before, this uh, agrees with, with the earlier studies that uh, uh, women um, decision making or, or, or their involvement in commercial crops reduces uh, when technologies um, are introduced. Uh, something that we as um, you know uh, uh, technology designers and implementers that we should should put in mind so that 
the benefits of the technologies are distributed equally among uh, different households and members. Uh, so as a way of conclusion, uh, of course, as I said, we assess the impact of IPM technology on women decision making on marketing production, the ma a mango production and marketing, and we have seen a decrease in the decision making index by 21.2%, and meaning that women lost control uh, in different domains um, product, uh, of production and marketing and distribution of benefits. And uh, therefore, it's important that policy effort should enhance uh, women decision making or should put in mind uh, some of these implications when the technolo technology is being designed and distributed. So some of um, the exogenous variables that we, we saw in the regression model that support this is through enhancing um, the extension services, increasing access to training um, of, of women so that they're involved in, in some cases we see when trainings um, you know, are, are conducted in the field, sometimes the, the timing don't favor women. And therefore, if the women are not involved in the training, then they have very little decisions to make um, when it comes to you know, handling those uh, produce. The, the, there's also need for direct intervention for women investment in mango production. Of course, some of the women were also saying they are not able to buy the products, even if they are the ones involved in managing the mangoes uh, because of constraints to do with the uh, you know, resources. And there's also need to strengthen social capital network. Uh, you know, we all know the importance of social uh, networks, group memberships uh, through which women could be trained and also through which women could, you know, assess some of uh, this uh, information from federal farmers. I think that's all from me. Thank you very much for listening and I look forward to your questions and comments. Thank you so much for that, Beatrice. That was um, a great presentation and really informative. Um, I should say that it was really interesting to see the level of women's participation in decision-making decrease well, with the adoption of IPM. So I've got a couple of questions here from Bothy, some great ones, I should say. Um, so the first one, what guided or influenced setting the indicators for each of the domains? Mm -hmm. So can I just go ahead? Yeah, definitely. Okay, thank you very much. I see Bossy Bori Bet is the one who is asking this question. That name sounds very familiar. Um, uh, thank you very much for the question. As, as I said, um, we adopted the Women Empowerment in Agriculture Index um, that have been provided and tested uh, by the IFPRI team for measuring women empowerment. However, as I said, we tailored those quest, uh, you know, the, 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 um, what has been provided to fit into what we uh, we wanted to um, to measure. So what 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 happens with this women empowerment index? There are some questions, general questions that have been set out uh, that should be you know uh, tailored to whatever crop uh, that um, that. Uh, that we are, uh, you know, if you are doing research that you are looking at. So uh, based on our context, we uh, we, we um, defined the questions um, uh, based on what we thought was important in terms of the different roles uh, that women do. And actually, even before we did this, we went out and did a focus group discussion to have an understanding of some, uh, you know, the key um roles that are done by men and women or the key roles involved in mango production and marketing. So this this was the uh, what guided us. Yeah. Beautiful. So, Thank you. Um, I go to the I, second question. Yes, definitely. So um, this is another question by Bossy. Um, honestly, the decrease in decision making is a concern. How can this be addressed? Um, are they initially involved when the IPM technologies are being developed? Wow, well, yeah, this is this is a very important. And I, as I said, uh, of course, uh, this is the feedback that we gave back to our team. 
so that they can align. For instance, um, as I said, the, some of this training did not, um, I would say the, the dissemination of the, the, the technology was not gender mainstreamed. So bringing back this information helped our team in uh, considering some of um, you know some, some key areas. For instance, the training, the, the timing for training, as I said, it should not coincide with the, when women are doing you know home chores. Um, there was also a consideration of uh, can we have a you know set aside place where women can come and put their children there as they concentrate with the training. Uh, the other thing was to um, to to establish a, a, you know demonstration plots where women can go at their convenience and uh, and and get trained. We have lead farmers or model farmers within different villages uh, who, who have been as trained and and actually are willing and and they 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 are willing to train whoever comes to their farm at any given time. So so that women can come at these uh, you know, farms conveniently and get the training. And, and of course, even um, they are told where to, but to get the materials. Um, so, so in terms of involving them in uh, IP in, in uh, development, and uh, not really because the, 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 this is a pest which uh, some of this uh, train, I mean, development has been done in the lab. But I think the most important uh, stage is the dissemination, how inclusive is, uh, uh, is uh, I mean, women are in terms of the dissemination. That's what I would say, possible. Lovely. Um, I think this would probably, uh, we, uh, we get you to answer a couple more. Um, are there any major diseases in mango other than fruit fly in your country? Oh, yes, definitely. There are diseases, for instance, the anthracnose uh, is, is quite a major problem right now. And uh, also the white, the white scales or something. Uh, and and uh, let me say for the anthracnose, uh, there they are a few solutions that have come up that are being disseminated alongside the fruit fry uh, IPM package. So yes, definitely they are there and uh, they are also being addressed. Lovely. Um, I am conscious of the time, so. Um... Beatrice, if you could just probably answer the rest, uh, any questions that come through in the Q&A box, that would be great. Um, but we will have to move thank on you. to our next speaker, that's um, Han Davy. And thank you so much, Beatrice, that was a really great presentation. Um, so Han Davy, if you. you would like thank to you. share your slide, that'd be great, thank you. Uh, professor, okay, there you go. Sorry. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Leandra and Miss Ellison. It's very much uh, I confirm my appreciation and thank you for giving me opportunity to share our uh, research is in uh, uh, on women in mango farming in uh, West Java, Indonesia. Uh, this is uh, our team. Uh, we have. Uh, I'm by I myself, Handevi, Asari, Arinese, and Satana is from the uh, National Research and Innovation Agency. Uh, we, uh, previously, with the same with the uh, Septanti, we are in Indonesian Center for Agriculture, Social Economic and Policy Studies and under Ministry of Agriculture. And now uh, Burita Suhaiti is from previously is the same from ICASEP, but now is, is uh, he, she is uh, in uh, IPB. And Stefano Defari is uh, from uh, DAF, Australia. Uh, Peter Johnson and Vijay Samugan is our expert on this project. So this project is uh, part of our collaboration research between Ministry of Agriculture and uh, ACR project with uh, DAF as a uh, uh, DAF in uh, Fishery of Queensland in is uh, implementing uh, implementing organization. I'm just going uh, to I'm just going to interrupt Professor Hundui. Can could you just um, yes. max, could you just maximize your screen? We're just seeing the um, small slides at the moment. If that's perfect. Okay. 
We want the movie theater experience here. So thank you. It's okay. Uh, okay. It'll just, yep, yeah, perfect. <laughs> thank you so much. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I try to, uh, I learned much uh, from uh, our first panelist from Beatrice. Thank you very much. I can learn via team in uh, Indonesia. We, we learn and analyze what uh, you have done. Uh, uh, and my presentation is still just uh, we uh, present the uh, information or the performance of how the role of women in mango farming in, in case study in West Java, because this study is still the baseline study, not yet uh, evaluating. We, we will, um, what we call, we will evaluate or we will uh, 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 conduct it the, conduct it the, this uh, up not not this uh, race survey or end line survey is the, the last uh, year or the first uh, next year. So that's why we cannot analyze the before and after and also the make uh, analysis like uh, what uh, our friends before a presentation from Kenya done. So uh, the we saw this. Uh, we know that Indonesia mango production is ring fit that Brazil in uh, after Brazil, India, China, and Thailand. But mango production in 2021 was 2.18 million ton. It was slightly decline about uh, two uh, percent from production in 2020. One of the constraints to get a high mango yields is pest and disease attack. That's why the mango problems of mango in Indonesia is uh, was fruit fly infestation. That's why uh, for this regard, Asia collaboration with Indonesia Minister of Agriculture under the project Asia number uh, slash 2015 slash to uh, 014 uh, and dur duration of the project is 2018 up to 2023 and maybe it will be extend 2024 because uh, last two years we uh, uh, cost of the COVID pandemic with some of the our activities cannot uh, implement it. Let's carry out the project area wide management for food flies. Uh, we will uh, uh, use the AWM. The EWN was a low insecticide system approach to reduce fruit fly infestation to a near zero. The objective of the EWM is to reduce fruit losses. For this, uh, we can uh, explore the marketable fruit. And also the second one is improve the mango quality. And the third one is to reduce overall chemical use. It is expected that the mango growers, it will increase their return significantly. For this presentation, uh, it just uh, aims to assessing the characteristic of mango farmers, analyzing women access and participation in mango farming, and comprehending the woman role in decision making on the benefit allocation of mango farming. Uh, the study was conducted in six villages in Krasak. We call the Krasak village. Krasak, Sileklor, and Pavidian is in Indramayu district and Sedonglor, Panongan, and Putat district in Cirebon district in West Java province. The two districts in Ramayu and Cirebon is uh, mostly uh, the two area of the specific mango, uh, we call the um, Kedong Ginchu, is the variety specific from the in Ramayu Cirebon. So the project is located in this, uh, in this uh, location. Uh, the baseline uh, conducted on July up to August 2019, then we uh, updated on June 2021. The villages were the research site of the ASEA project, as we already mentioned. The development of area management approach for fruit flies and mango for Indonesia, Philippines, Australia, and the Asia Pacific region. Uh, sample consists, uh, we have small uh, uh, sample on the, the 1044 mango farmers household uh, who were selected previously. Uh, the previously is the location of the farmer where the area were uh, treatment as a AWM project and also for the control uh, this, uh, maybe village. A survey method was applied for data collecting using structural questionnaire, and also we uh, conducted the focus group discussion. This presentation, as we already mentioned, uh, focuses on gender aspect to elaborate uh, the female's role in mango farming based on par farmer perception. 
the parts cover the access and participation of women in mango farming, the role of the female in decision making and the allocation of the benefit obtained from the mango farming for particular items or expenditure. The term of access implies the degree of ease achieved by farmers and their family members on farming resources and activities. In this study, it was related to how women got access to mango farming activities. Meanwhile, participation was defined as a person's mental and emotional goals and taking responsibility for them. In reality, someone who has access for a farming resource might not always participate in farming activities. And we can see how in uh, our research study uh, conducted. It's just, uh, we just uh, show the gender development index in West Java. We just want to show you that uh, Indramayu and Chirabon, where they are our district location is uh, uh, in, in West Java. Actually, this uh, very uh, still, up uh, it's uh, Java Barat is West Java. The development index in Indramayu and Chirabon is higher than in, uh, West Java. Uh, for the education and also the income share, we see that the Chirabon and Indramayu district is also the higher position to access. We think this is very much uh, good for the location. The uh, government of district area is uh, boost the role of women in agriculture, especially in mango production. We are now so the characteristic of mango farmer household. We see that uh, in Chirabon, in, in Chirabon, that is a household uh, of uh, age. It's uh, still in productive age. So maybe that's uh, uh, what we call. We can uh, push the uh, technology adoption to 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 more more what we call more speed up. And also the head of education is just only uh, primary school. And suppose education is lower than the uh, household, uh, head household. And they already have the mango farming experience more than 12 uh, years in mango farming. It's uh, all of the, uh, our sample. And uh, most, more than 50% uh, stated that the mango farming is a main job of this household. It's uh, in Japan like this. And how about the uh, Indramayu? It's uh, almost the same that the head of household age is uh, still in productive uh, age. So we can push the uh, technology adoption. Hopefully, that's uh, well. Uh, can the IPM or no? We I, AWM uh, technology will can uh, adopt it for this area. Uh, also, the mango farming experience uh, more than uh, in Chirapuan. This almost uh, fourteen years they have experience in mango farming. And most of them is uh, uh, mango farming as a main job of a header also. Almost 77% uh, of our respondent or our uh, sample is uh, uh, stated that mango farming as a main job. And for the two location in West Java, we, why we just make two uh, two what they call two location as a uh, West Java because the as I mentioned uh, Indramayu and Chirabon as a center for the mango production especially for Kedong Kinchu. that's why I try to uh, aggregate uh, Indramayu and West Java as uh, and and Indramayu and Chirabon as West Java it's almost the same it's the same uh, the head of household is uh, productive. Uh, it, it's and also the mango uh, farming experience is more than 13 uh, years uh, uh, experience. What about the role of women uh, of uh, access? So uh, we pick, uh, we will uh, uh, later on uh, uh, will what we call will present the uh, from uh, focus to focus group discussion or when the men, when the men, something like that, but it's a 
for the presentation of access uh, 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 woman in uh, Ch Chirabon, I think this uh, uh, in sanitation uh, is uh, more high in sanitation and also non-sanitation harvesting and also harvest collecting. Uh, non-sanitation here is uh, including the spraying something like that for the pesticide and also in Endramayu. So we we have the red uh, number is uh, I think this more than uh, forty percent uh, they have access in uh, mango farming. The woman, it's just woman. We didn't. Uh, we have data, but uh, for this presentation, I just uh, make uh, access to uh, for the woman. Sorry. And what about the participation? Uh, however, not on uh, not all of the they can access uh, the participate in this uh, mango farming. Women just uh, in Cirebon is uh, in sanitation and also harvesting and harvest uh, collecting is a higher percentage. But this uh, more uh, most of activities is lower than uh, their access. So not all of the women uh, can access, but did not uh, participate in this uh, activities. This form, from this two tabel, as we can see that uh, not all uh, access will participate in this mango farming. Uh, what about the decision making? Uh, the rural women on decision making and mango farming for the uh, allocation for food, clothing, and also generally and saving is in Cirebon is uh, dominant for uh, the woman decision uh, making role. And in Indramayu is almost the same that allocation for food, clothing, and also generally and saving is uh, very much dominant uh, that uh, decision making uh, for women. And also in Jawa Barat, uh, I will see this, uh, what we call West Java is uh, also uh, for allocation for food, clothing, and also jewelry and saving is uh, very much dominant, uh, the role of women here in decision making. Uh, what about the uh, women rules on benefit allocation and also still uh, food? housing and also saving and others uh, why we others because many uh, aspect here we uh, total and so it's a higher a number of uh, presentation here and in the west java uh, with uh, the uh, still uh, allocation or benefit allocation for food is uh, very much uh, dominant for women rules and also for the housing and uh, saving in household. I mean, uh, from our uh, focus group discussion, we have the uh, what we call the tabel here, but I don't uh, share uh, in this presentation. But uh, the uh, what we call the main uh, the main. Uh, what we call the main uh, activities or the main uh, focus on focus uh, from uh, focus group discussion is with male dominate in mango production activities and farming decision. This uh, still dominant by males and female dominant dominate with domestic issues, housework, looking after children, and shopping something like that. Female do not participate in socialization, even an extension. As, uh, I mean that socialization of the project, uh, AWM project. Well, females do not participate on that, and also an extension. Female do participate in mango processing, and uh, female also dominate on decision making on household, household spending. So collective decision making on health, income, education, and saving. We have the data from that from the our from our focus to discussion. And the uh, previous presentation is uh, the table is uh, the percentage of uh, access, participation, and also uh, benefit allocation uh, and decision making. It's the qualitative. We have qualitative data on that activities. Uh, so we can, uh, from this baseline, we have the conclusion and also the uh, recommendation 
that mango farmers in West Java, especially in Cirebon and in Ramayu district, are still in productive age. Apart from mango, a few of them also cultivated food crops such as a rice horticulture crops. Meanwhile, the majority of farmers posts are a housewives. Women and had access to and could participate in mango farming activities in the upstream and downstream activities. The EWM project assistance is expected to impact uh, on increasing women's access and participation in mango farming. The study studied, uh, suggested that the agriculture program should involve women as an actor and beneficiaries. The role of women in farm activities seem rather strenuous because they have to handle domestic work. The implementation of EWM project open up opportunities for women to increase participation in mango farming, especially in sorting, grading, and also processing activities. It might be better if the woman could involve in post harvest and marketing activities. Women's involvement would be driven to increase mango value added. Women could optimize the benefit of the program and further ensure its sustainability. What the implication key of the AWM project that the female and household mango farming need to be targeted with business development upscaling skills. Inclusion in the understanding of benefit that EWM project can bring to household income helps benefit, especially for reduced pesticide uses. I think it's all. Uh, thank you very much. So sorry that uh, we cannot share uh, for this opportunity to analyze all because uh, the uh, online surveys uh, will be done uh, the last uh, year or, or the first of the next year. I thank you. Thank you, Hande, for that great presentation. Uh, so again, some really interesting points to note on the impact that the adoption of area-wide management has had on women's decision-making at the household level. So I've got a few yeah. questions here for you to answer. Um, this is by Vilma. Thanks for the presentation. May I ask, how much is the contribution of mango industry to your agriculture? And how much is the contribution of women in agri-sector compared to men? Yeah, uh, sorry, on this uh, project, we didn't count uh, how much the, uh, the, what we call the contribution, because uh, we didn't have any, all of the, uh, what we call, the very small activities uh, that women in Influence in the farming, uh, mango farming, because you see at the uh, district uh, in Indramayu and uh, Cirebon, the uh, the mango is very high. So the in mango farming, uh, uh, what we call the participate uh, from male in farming is very uh, rarely. It's just for the activity for the processing and also sanit uh, sanitation. The bus for the participation, we can. Uh, so sorry, I didn't uh, account for the how much per, uh, percentage uh, to all of the household. I thank you. That's okay. Um, I just wanted to uh, yes uh, read out a message from um Beatrice in the chat where she says thank you, Handevi. So many similarities with yeah. Kenya and East Africa. Um, I'm guessing yeah. it was it. Um, Indonesia, sorry, Beatrice, but yeah. Um, the next yeah. question uh, for Indonesia: Females do not participate yeah. in extension. Does this affect the yeah. mango value chain in any way? Yeah, yeah. We just uh, finished our analysis from uh, value chain just uh, two or three months ago, so we didn't analyze for the uh, participation of women. But uh, we can see that uh, for the women is uh, selling in. A traditional market is a uh, very very much uh, participation of women but for the uh, what we call for the big activity in uh, what modern market something like that is very very rare but we didn't uh, finish uh, for analyze for the value chain 
So, so sorry. And also, I ask, I see from the chat that uh, why they can access but not participate. <laughs> yeah, uh, because we ask about the what we call per uh, perception of the woman. Uh, can you access this? Yes, we can, but I cannot participate because I have a many uh, burden of uh, in-house uh, domestic uh, activities, something like that. So they can actually can access, but cannot participate because uh, some of the uh, burden activities in uh, in households, domestic household, something like that. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, uh, yeah, in regards to that, are there any you know ongoing activities to improve women's participation levels in access to training and extension? Um, so we yeah. had a workshop at the end of last year to launch this program mm -hmm. and one of the suggestions mm -hmm. was it'd be great to you know have women have access to childcare so that they are able to yeah. attend training so do we do you have something like that that's ongoing in Indonesia at the moment yeah uh, actually for the as i know that uh, for the food crops is many activity for women uh, get uh, what we call the uh, uh, training, something like that, and also uh, extension. But I see, and the to location is a very rare woman activity uh, for the training, and also we have, but it's still uh, a number is very small in mango farming. Maybe because of the activity is very hard for women for the. I saw the farming is very, the, the, the tree is very high, so they cannot uh, spraying and they cannot uh, picking from the uh, harvest, something like that. But uh, as I know for the, in food crops, it's very, uh, very, uh, what we call, woman is very informed and, and participate in this activity. I have, uh, we have in this project, uh, uh, what we call uh, uh, doing the training, for the mango farming, actually, uh, what we call, especially for the processing something like that, then involving the woman also. We try and we have to, we can, uh, what we call, accelerate to other women to participate in mango uh, farming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's really good. Um, and I guess, yes. So we will move on to our last and final speaker of the evening. So that's Ms. Mm -hmm. um, Michiko Lopez. Uh, yeah. Mitch, are you happy for me to uh, present? Yeah. To share your thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Thank okay. You so much, thank you. Baby. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Leandra, I'm not sure if your bandwidth's not good. It might be better to get uh, Michiko to share from her end. Probably, yeah. yeah. So, Michiko, yeah. we did have a practice before. Sorry, everyone, for interrupting, but I'm just thinking it might go uh, smoother, Michiko, if you um, if you try from your end first. Yes, of course. Uh, no Thank problem. you. Thank I'll you. Share screen. I just stop. Good Ooh. afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This paper is entitled Women's Household Decision-Making, a Pathway for Effective Mango Technology Adoption in the Island Garden City of Samal. This is an in-progress paper under the project entitled Adoption of Pre- and Post-Harvest Technologies to Improve the Competitiveness of Carabao Mango in the Local and International Markets, which is administered under the John Dillon Fellowship through the University of New England and funded by ACR. There are four institutions involved in this ongoing project, namely the University of the Philippines in Mindanao, University of the Philippines Los Baños, Visaya State University, and the Philippine Council for Agriculture, Aquatic and Natural Resources Research and Development of the Department of Science and Technology. So this is the outline of my presentation. We have four parts, the introduction or background, methodology, initial results and discussion as this is an ongoing research project. And, uh, and the last part, which is the conclusion and recommendation. And much of the discussion will of course focus on the initial results. And uh, we, we try as much as we can to discuss the gender dimension of the 
mango value chain in the island garden, garden city of Samal. And in the last part, I, I'll try as much as I can or as best as I could to discuss the implication of a gender, uh, the gender implication or gender dimension in um, as it applies to integrated pest management, particularly um, managing fruit fly of our mango industry, which is really a serious uh, problem at this time. The Philippines has ideal land and climate characteristics for growing the best mango variety in the world known as the Philippine Carabao Mango, the dominant and sole export variety. Mango is also the third most important fruit crops in the Philippines next to pineapple and banana. Loved by many but for its texture, sweetness, and it is usually eaten fresh. It generates an income as high as 100 to 300,000 per hectare per year for trees or with trees that are 10 to 20 years old. Mango is also very popular, wholesalers and concessionaries supplying consumer demand through supermarkets. It's an emerge as an emerging opportunity, currently estimated at 8,000 tons per annum. The fruit is also processed as flavorings for ice creams and pastries and other delicacies as well. These activities allow us to visualize the various players and their roles in the different nodes of the mango, of the mango value chain per se. Countries like India, China, Thailand, and Mexico have dominated the export market based on FAO statistics as of 2016. There is a huge potential for our man mango industry. However, export quality fresh mangoes remain very low at less than 5%. This is attributed to pre and post harvest handling as well as pest and disease infestations compounded with the rising costs of production and marketing, as well as the effects of climate change. Asian countries are very context specific, assuming a gender lens when looking at the different agriculture related issues and concern can contribute to the discourse in gender and development create desirable impacts to the UN Sustainable Development Goals in addressing poverty, hunger, and gender and development. Putting premium on the importance of gender dimension across culture, geography in a given socio-political landscape can even contribute to the body of knowledge. And to manage expectations, the presentation is based on the results initial as it is, of the research which aims to increase technology adoption, particularly for hot water treatment and bagging using Taiwan bag for mangoes. This is in our study site, the island garden city of Samal, Mindanao, Philippines. Samal is not only known for its white beaches and tourist attraction, but it also supplies approximately 2,000 metric tons of mango in Davao City out of the 70,000 metric tons volume supplied to Davao City. Davao City is right across the island garden city of Samal. The demand exceeds supply for fresh mangoes suitable for export. Only 10% of the volume is expected, exported rather, due to quality issues. Minimum residues are being enforced in select markets like Japan and Korea. Thus, local mango production are challenged in meeting export quality requirements. Among the pressing problems is that most mango growers do not pra practice the recommended package of technologies in mango production. This is based on the survey conducted by mango experts. So as for scope and limitation, as I made mention, the data from this uh, paper presentation is from our ongoing research project funded by ACR under the John Dillon Fellowship. 
It is limited in our study area and our farmer cooperators and or respondents who are all from the island garden city of Samal, Mindanao, Philippines. The discussion is also confined in the results of the focus group discussion, investigating the different roles men and women assumes or play in the Samal Mango value chain. Key informant interviews were also done with the head or focal person from the Provincial Agriculture Office to explore possibilities for fruit fly management and how men and women may be able to perform the related works if adopted at farm levels. However, secondary data is gathered to, sub to substantiate the data for a more context-specific initial analysis. Meanwhile, this paper does not dwell much on the management of pests and diseases, particularly fruit fly on mangoes. Under the project, a season-long training was conducted for mango production. This is in coordination or partnership with the Provincial Agriculture Office. 51 participants registered to the season-long training and the entire season, uh, the entire season consisted of 10 face-to-face -face sessions. Out of the 51 participants who are mostly male, 37 of which are male, and 14 are female, only 10 have logged in to at least three sessions, face-to-face -face sessions. And out of these 10, two are only women. For purposes of this paper, this is the, the value chain map of the Samal um, Mango value chain. The FGD participants were asked to map out the roles of men and women in the value chain, the Mango value chain, to validate activities they were made to identify their activities in production of Mango and in each activity indicated who does mostly this particular activity. Most activities associated with mango farming production are done by men, although women also assist, but they are largely done by men. Activities associated with spraying are solely performed by men. Women's tasks are mostly sorting harvested mangoes. However, it was established that while these activities are associated with mango production, at the participants or farmers level, this may not necessarily reflect on their exact activities on their respective farms. Most of them are engaged in contract farming arrangements, wherein the prevailing arrangement is 80% 80, 80 20%, 80% uh, for the contractor share and 20% for the farm owner. However, the contractor assumes all the risks as he or she takes care of the farming activities, all the inputs, all the labor required uh, that is taken care of by the contractor, including farm inputs and labor, as I have made mention. The farm owner's share is clean share, meaning after, uh, after selling the produce, they get automatically 20% of the net income. Old contract arrangement is at 60% on the contractor side and 40% um, on the farmer side. But this is not the current practice right now. Uh, what they do is 80-20, wherein 80% goes to the contractor and 20% clean share to the farmer or farm owner. On July 15, 2022, a focus group discussion was done among select farmers, contractors, finance, financiers, and agricultural technicians and extension workers. Uh, with them are also representatives from, from support services agencies such as the City Agriculture Office, the Provincial Agriculture Office, and the Cooperative Development Agency or CDA. A total of 16 participants joined the FGD. Majority of, again, majority of them are male. And um, the average age of our farmers or participants is 43 years old. A focus group discussion for the technology acceptance model or TAM 
study was conducted among mango farmers. Only two FGD groups were created comprising a total of seven farmer participants. There are two groups, four and three each. Questions pertaining to elements of the TAM included the following perceived ease of use, perceived use, attitude, and behavioral intention. Overall, the FGD results are favorable towards their acceptance of the technologies that were introduced during the training, particularly the hot water treatment as well as bagging using Taiwan bags. These initial results somehow signify the likelihood of the farmer's adoption of these technologies in their mango production. During the FGD, uh, focusing on gender, it's interesting to note that at the household level, all the participants agree that the wives in the family eventually decides whether the family will engage into contractual arrangement as made mention in the previous slides that the prevailing practice or most of the mango farmers in the island garden city of Samal engaged uh, into contractual arrangements with a contractor uh, who are usually or oftentimes also the financer. The husbands or partners consult their wives over this matter and decides together. But as they said uh, in the focus group discussion, it is, the, it is usually the wives who eventually decides whether to push for the contractual arrangements or not. In terms of the monetary share from these arrangements, it is also the wife, no? the wife or the lady partner at the household level who decides, who gets to decide the, decide the allocation of income. Um, they uh, Basically, it's the wife who holds the purse of the household. So this arrangement prevails given that the women also take care of the food acquisition and sourcing and of course the preparation of the family food for the for of course the for for consumption one of the activities in the focus group discussion is for the participants to identify the 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 actors that they frequently interact with and prioritize them according to their level of influence. And what is interesting to note is that um, they have summarized the four most influential actor um, for them. Number one is the contractor, who is usually the financer. Uh, number two is the agriculture or in input provider and the chemical consultants for their mango farms. And number three are the extension workers or um, people from the city agriculture office and the provincial agriculture office. They are usually the extension workers or technicians of government. And last but not the least, number four is their fellow farmer. What is also interesting to note is that uh, they identified that they they usually transact with contractors or financers that are mostly male. On the other hand, the number two uh, level of influence, the most influential at number two, uh, the agriculture input provider, it is usually the sales lady uh, in store. But then on site in their farms, they are usually male. Uh, acting as chemical consultants or consultants of various agricultural inputs. That's on farm site, while on the store area, they usually transact with lady, sales lady of uh, these agricultural uh, supply stores. And the city agriculture office, uh, of course, it's, uh, it's a mix, most um, male and female. And of course, their fellow uh, farmers who are usually uh, male rather than female fa farmers for mango, uh, for mango farming. In conclusion, most of the Samal mango farmers are engaged in contractual arrangements with contractors or financers. The latter assumes all the risks 
for each cropping season, while the farm owners get, gets uh, the clean share of 20 to 25 percent from the net sales or net income of mango productions. How these mango farmers transition to contractual arrangements may provide useful insights for integrated best management, given that women partners or spouses primarily decides whether or not to enter into contractual arrangements. The intra-power dynamics within the household, particularly in decision-making, is critical in building women IPM leaders in Samal mango farming activities. Um, and a thorough investigation of the gender dimension in mango value chain is key towards sustainable mango production. So here is a picture of a healthy mango fruit. So it's very fine, smooth. And uh, in the next slide, we will see a fruit fly infested mango fruit. So this is a fruit fly infested mango fruit. Uh, compared to the previous one, uh, they really look different in terms of uh, quality. Here are some of the fruit fly traps that were installed in one of the farms of uh, a farmer cooperator of the Provincial Agriculture Office, Gabunanda Farm. The same farmer cooperator also under this research ongoing research project. As you can see, these fr fruit fly traps uh, looks like low-lying uh, fruits. So in one of our key informant interview with Dr. Zimbrano, she reiterated that related works for the installation and even maintenance and monitoring and evaluation of fruit fly traps can easily be done by both men and women. Uh, women, on the other hand, can uh, can do this with ease, thereby uh, they can increase their participation in farming activities uh, for mango production. This is also what uh, what a monitoring uh, activities for the fruit fly traps uh, looks like. Uh, these are the fruit flies that are trapped inside this container. So that ends my presentation, and thank you so much for your kind attention. Good afternoon. Thank you, Michiko. Another really great presentation um, with some fascinating insights on you know, how women largely are the decision makers on whether to engage in contract farming or not. Um, I really like the pictures as well that you shared. You know, it really helps to get a visual uh, presentation of fruit fly infested fruits and traps. Um, so in regards to women making the decision um, on contractual farming, do you know what factors impact women's decision um, over you know, pushing their husbands towards uh, going towards contractual farming? Oh, what factors that, uh, if I may rephrase, rephrase your question, uh, what factors uh, affects their decision to engage into contract farming? Yeah. Is that is yeah. that right? Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, based on our uh, field uh, field exposure as well as field work, uh, there is a consensus that production costs and marketing costs it's becoming very uh, very. Uh, is increasing and it's not really affordable for ordinary far farmers. And uh, prices, uh, the setting of prices is also controlled by a few people, particularly those uh, financiers or contractors. So in that case, there are, uh, as you can see in the, in the presentation that uh, there's more demand than uh, supply. So, um, so in that, uh, in that case, uh, they prefer to engage into contractual arrangements because they do nothing. They just uh, give, uh, they just allow the, the contractor who happens also to be the financer to, to take care of their mango farms. And at the end of the cropping season, they get clean share. So it's for, for them, it's more, it's more secured they may likely have lower income, but then again, they are saved. They don't assume risks. So on the part also of the contractor, uh, 
they indicated that there are uh, also seasons that they are uh, losing instead of uh, gaining, but that uh, but they recognize it as part of uh, uh, business dynamics. So I, I think uh, that's really one of the, uh, the, those are some of the factors that leads uh, families to decide whether to engage into contractual arrangements. Oh, thank you. Um, so I've got a couple of questions in here in the question and answer box. Um, how many fruit fly varieties were found in your country? Actually, there are three varieties, but uh, the most popular and uh, is the Philippine Carabao mango, and it's only the the it's also the the only variety that is being exported. And I hope you can come over to the Philippines and taste our Carabao mango. It's really very very delicious. Definitely. Um, hi, Michiko. Can you describe more about the financiers contractors? And are they organized in groups or individuals? Can you describe more about the percentage expected on top of the cost? Oh, uh, for for financiers or con uh, contractors, uh, I, I'm I'm what I can share is uh, only confined to our study area, which is the island garden city of Samal, and uh, there we. Uh, in, in that in in that study site, you can only count with your fingers just how many uh, are these uh, contractors or financiers. So uh, somehow they are really the the biggest player that they can influence uh, pricing and even uh, and even the the kind of arrangements uh, being um, being uh, made with uh, with farmers. So. Uh, it, also in the island garden city of Samal, there are established and uh, uh, established mango uh, growers cooperative. But then again, uh, as many as um, as in uh, cooperatives in the Philippines, some are really mature. But then again, uh, most are are still uh, are still uh, there are really more rooms for for improvement in terms of organizational and leadership, uh, leadership, money, uh, leadership style. And uh, particularly, uh, um, we can, um, Simco, like for, like for example, Simco in, in the Island Garden city of Samal is uh, uh, confronted with many challenges, uh, organizational challenges. So I think that's one of the reasons why uh, why uh, contractual arrangements among these uh, among these uh, financiers and farmers still persists at this time because uh, somehow organization at the cooperative level it's is quite um, challenging as it is. Yeah, thank you, thank you so much, Miss. Uh, yeah, I'm just conscious of the time because it's already um, yeah you know, we're supposed to be ending by now. Um, but thank you so much for that. That was lovely. Uh, there's another question in the Q&A box. So if you could just answer that, that would be great. Uh, I'm just going to quickly wrap up by sharing my screen. And I apologize to everyone for going over time ahead of you. I'm really sorry. Is everyone able to see that? Uh, not yet, Leandra. It just might take a little bit to load up. Here we go. It's coming. Uh, I, I'm going to have to go. Okay. It's not a problem. Don't panic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. we can, yeah. we're, we're just going to be a couple of minutes over, everyone. Not not long. Yeah, we're uh, nearly so at the end. There's no, there's no hurry. Okay, um, Alison, I'll let you take over for the summary. Excellent. I'm not sure if I can be seen. I probably can. Um, but uh, look, hey, thank you so much, uh, everyone. We just uh, had uh, a very rich, informative insight uh, into the roles and the, the role that gender can play in uh, integrated pest management and the importance of understanding these roles as part of really um, getting a grip and really understanding that 
how to support long-term sustainable IPM. I'm going to be very brief because I know we, we don't have much time, but I just wanted to really just a couple of key points from each speaker. I think Beatrice um, really pointed out uh, fruit flies, how they really constitute a major threat to mango production. Uh, and the other speakers also uh, outlined that very clearly that it's concern in this region. Um, her research, I think, was kind of a wake-up call, slightly alarming in that uh, it actually showed that women's decision-making um, decreased um, their, their uh, ability there to influence and be a part of that decision-making due to the introduction of an IPM sort of technologies uh, in the field, and they lost some aspects of control over production, marketing, distribution, and, and those benefits. And so I think that, that really shows something that's very critical here, and that's the importance of really building in a lens on gender, uh, woman empowerment into projects from the very start. So that really informs the design of inclusive IPM strategies and approaches, and that the benefits of programs are distributed evenly and inclusively. And I thought that was just a great presentation, Beatrice. Um, really, really, um, really key point there, and it really exemplifies what we need to be doing. Um, Prof uh, Professor Handowi, excellent presentation on the work uh, that you're looking at in West Java. Uh, and how we really need to look closely at the role of women in mango farming and really understand what those roles are and where we can influence them across the value chain. And there were some real opportunities there to um, look at uh, business development for women um, and their roles post-harvest. Uh, and important to include them in training. And I just wanted to also just be clear there, here that it's not about getting women involved in every activity uh, and giving them training at everything across uh, the value chain. It's looking at how we can empower them uh, in those communities uh, and empower the community as a whole. So we don't wanna actually load women with more time doing more work in the field because that's not actually going to uh, empower them at all. It's just going to give them more work and they're already uh, very time starved uh, most of the times anyway. And we saw that quite clearly in uh, Handoui's, uh, the, the, the breakdown of all the time that women were spending um, doing other activities, uh, not just on the farm or uh, in, in the um, food production or the post harvest work. Um, so I'm really particularly interested to find out more as that project goes and we'll be working really closely with that team. Um, and then Machiko, um, I, you really shone a light on women's household decision making um, and their role and their real role. And I thought it was really interesting those points that the wives had a key role in deciding around the contractual arrangements or not. I mean, that's a really big decision um, to make in the family. So, so that was really, really interesting. And um, also that they hold the, the family purse or, or the money in the accounting. And that's quite common and we've found in lots of other examples. Uh, and those influential actors and whether they were female or male. So really great insight there. And I will just say that it was almost a little bit like a tourism campaign in, in some aspects. I, I actually felt like I might move and do some mango farming in, in the Philippines there with all the, the pictures of the beach. But it's actually extremely hard work. So we do need to think about that as well and how we are again empowering women. And so I think one of the key points is that this work is very important. Um, not just for empowering women, but for empowering communities uh, and all the actors, including male farmers, um, to manage plant pests in a sustainable way, uh, in this case, fruit, fr fr fruit flies, but that how critical it is um, that gender aspect if we really want long term adoption of sustainable integrated pest management uh, in the field. Um, so very good presentations. Thank you so much to the speakers from me. Uh, and I'm going to hand you quickly over to Leandra, but thank you to all the participants as well. I really enjoyed the session. Fantastic. Thanks, Leandra. I forgot to unmute myself today. Thank you so much, Alison. Um, once again, thank you to all the speakers uh, for your lovely presentations. And I'd like to thank everyone who attended this webinar. A big thank you to Alison for all the work that she's been doing in the space and to the funders of this program. Um, it's been a pleasure being your host for tonight. I'm sorry about the internet problems, but I look forward to seeing everyone again at the next session on the role of gender in banana disease management on the 18th of October. Don't miss out on that. See ya. Bye. Bye. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Miss Alison Leandra. Bye. 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 Bye